Good morning, good morning guys, and welcome to day five of contemporary -thon, where I do all of the things and none of the things. Let's jump into it. Today I do have a couple things that I need to do outside the house. You guys know I like never bring my camera. I never vlog outside the house. I might use my phone to do a couple different things. I've got to drop my grandmother off at our Greek festival that she's having at her church. because She's going to be working that and doing stuff over there. I am battling, and I know it's getting old, but I'm battling the worst headache. Um, again, we just have a ton of storms in Pennsylvania right now. And the pressure system is extreme and everything just hurts and I'm I'm really really over it. I need to stop at the post office and send out some books. I need to stop at my mother's office uh, at her work and I'm going to print out my book. You guys have been asking how my writing date went, how writing has been going in general, and the answer is it's been going well. I still have a lot of world building, a lot of character building, like a lot of work that needs to go into the book, but I'm at a certain stage where I feel like what I've got on like on the computer just needs to be printed out. So I'm going to go, I'm going to print it out. Document right now is about 109,500 words. It's big. So I will have that in a big giant binder to show you later on today, let you see kind of what that looks like completely printed out. I actually have a whole bunch of questions about my writing process for a writing video. So if you have any additional ones, definitely let me know down below. So my goals for today for reading is I would like to finish Alex approximately. I would like to finish Dear Heartbreak. That would bring me up to nine books. Honestly, I think I might just go on to Letters to the Lost. I don't know if I can get through Anger as a Gift this weekend. I really, really don't. But the TBR, obviously, as you guys know, means absolutely nothing. And then I work only from seven to nine o'clock tonight. And then I come back and I do writing. So I kind of need to wrap up the vlog a little bit earlier. I am watching Ola's vlog while I make hard boiled eggs and a little bit of lunch. Hard boiled eggs are not for lunch. It is one o'clock on Friday and I have done a whole bunch. I went to the post office. I dropped my grandmother off at church at her festival. Came back here. The air conditioner was set at 77, except it's 70 degrees out, so nothing was going on. And it's so stuffy and disgusting in here, so I had to open windows. But it's also muggy and like gonna rain-ish. So it's not that cool. It's like it doesn't feel that great right now still. Hence the little bit of fluster. Plus, I ran to all my errands and then I went to my mom's office and I was gonna print out my book. The file was corrupted. It would not open on her computer or on the printer when you put like the memory drive in, the stick in. So I had 40 minutes. I had to leave her office, come back to my house, re-upload to the memory drive, took my computer with me just in case, got back over to the office just before my mom had to leave. And then her computer still wouldn't acknowledge it. The printer still wouldn't acknowledge it. So thankfully I had my computer. I was able to completely re-download my pdf of my book but unfortunately didn't get to do any of like the editing that i wanted to do where i separated chapters a little bit better and separated i had printed out a couple pages of my world building and stuff like that just so i had them on record because i want to flesh them out a whole bunch more i want to do a lot more world building so i printed out those pages so i could make notes on them i didn't get to do like any of that kind of cleaning up stuff that i had done last night in preparation for printing and then that file was corrupted. It doesn't look pretty. It also is so much shorter than anything else I've ever printed because I printed it double-sided. But it's really cool to kind of see it all together because it's roughly about what it'll probably end up being size-wise. This is the closest I've ever come to like what my actual book would look like because obviously printed books are double-sided. I'm really excited tonight. Like I've said a thousand times, I do work from seven to nine. But then when I get back from that, I will be doing like a whole bunch of writing work. Also assess like chapter length and what I need to break down. I usually end up adding chapters and or like splitting things up so that my chapter lengths all kind of match a little bit better. I don't want to say it's the fun part of the editing, but it's the part of the editing that I actually enjoy. Like it's a lot of what I do when I have clients. I don't actually mind it that much. So comparatively to what I was doing prior, which was a little bit more fleshing out after the first draft was written, this is going to be a lot more 
fun for me. I almost don't want to read. I almost don't want to vlog. I just want to kind of work on the book. And when I have these moments of like inspiration where that's all I want to do, I hate ignoring it because you never know if that's going to come around again. I'm going to find a balance. It's going to all work. I did listen to a little bit more of Alex approximately today while I was running around and doing stuff and I'm making progress there. I'm enjoying it. It's cute. But like, again, oh my God, just realize that you're who you've also been talking to. I just, I can't get behind that. I love Jen Bennett's writing. I'm not mad at it. It's just that one particular plot device that I don't particularly like. So here's the deal. I've tried to do this about a dozen times and it hasn't worked. Now it has. Apparently when you use an exclamation point in your file name, things mean business. I am double siding it. Otherwise this is going to be forever long. So it won't be like, well, I guess it will be like a pretty true accurate description of like what the book might finally look like because pages are double-sided, right? I'm gonna print this, hole punch it, put it in my binder and go home because, oh my God, my head. So that's that. All right, we finally came to the end and I have a hole punch and I have a notebook, so time to get all these into here. Here it is. I think this is like a three inch binder. It's a big one. And the book fills it up pretty good. I tried to get it in a one and a half inch and it was not happening. This is the entirety of the third rewrite of this book. I feel like the title may change. Like I don't know how I feel about it anymore. So it's just a working title. In this I do have a little bit of content like I said that is like world buildy stuff. So in the front of this I have just notes and this is like basic notes on chapter structure and um urban fantasy notes and then a little bit about my world building and stuff like that. 18 pages of this are notes and that's just stuff that I want to be able to take like write down notes and do more world building stuff with it. And then because it's double sided this is a part of what like drove me bananas is that I couldn't like set this up. Sorry this is my laptop and those are all my boxes I have to get rid of. <clears throat> I couldn't set this up so that it was um like the chapter started over here. Unfortunately my file corrupted when I had originally like edited all of this but I never ended up putting stuff for the police force and then this is like part three which is the rewrite which is like in my Scrivener app but then it's not chapter seven it's obviously chapter one so I deleted all of this stuff originally and then the file corrupted and I couldn't print that so I just like re-download it and was like ah fuck it but like all of my chapter things are like weird and repeated but this is the entirety of my book um, double-sided so I've got a lot to edit and it's like it's so hefty guys 540 down here is the end which is like kind of insane to me like that's that's pretty intense so just as like an FYI the way that this is going to work now for the rest of my editing process is that basically I'm going to start tonight and I'm going to do a read through I'm going to make notes about my world building that I want to add I'm going to write in anything that I see that's choppy but I'm going to read it I'm going to do my not line edits but grammar edits as I read through if anything just sounds a little bit choppy I'm going to fix that right now like make my notes for that and then I'll also be making notes for world building as I read it, places where I feel like I need to flesh out relationships, things like that, and just make notes for myself for when I go back in. Because I really do consider when I was fleshing out a little bit before to still be part of my first writing. So this will be my first editing, and then I will go back in and do a second, like, round of implementing this, the notes that I take right now. And then I usually do a third edit, which is like a reprinting of like all of this implemented. I'll reprint it, look over it again one more time, see if I have any other notes, and then probably do like really small batches of beta readers. Whew. I don't even know, guys. I'm just hoping and praying by the end of this thing that I like what I have because like you know, I've done a couple rounds of this already. I feel in my heart like this is my best run yet. It's aged appropriately. Um, I feel like the urban fantasy aspect of it needs a lot more work. I need to do a lot more world building when it comes to how the two worlds interact. 
but I have a pretty clear idea of how I want that to work. I just don't think I did when I went into writing it. So I need to just implement a little bit more of that paranormal into like the everyday, which I don't think will be too hard. That's where I am with that right now. I've been listening to Alex approximately today as I ran around and did stuff. I'm on chapter 15. I'm 50% of the way through Alex approximately and actually really enjoying it. But while I'm home and I have time, I'm going to read more of Dear Heartbreak, which I a little bit less than halfway through at this point, 266 pages it looks like, and I'm on 107. So not quite halfway. So I'm going to read more of those stories. I didn't finish anything yesterday. I made a little bit of progress. I don't know if I'm really going to finish anything today. I'm hoping to just make progress. I have all day tomorrow. I have all day Sunday. But like I said in my earlier clip, all I really want to do is work on this book. And I've already finished seven things. So I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep pushing through. But I probably wouldn't look for me to like rally by finishing five, six more things. I'm probably going to finish Dear Heartbreak. Probably going to finish Alex approximately. And then I may finish one other thing. I'm going to probably switch though, like I said, to Letters to the Lost because I just don't think anger as a gift is going to happen during this readathon. That's it for now. I'm going to go and keep doing stuff. I've been physically reading Alex approximately, so I think I only have about 60 pages left. But I just went down for the mail and I have two packages. This one is printed matter that is time sensitive. I don't know who this is from. And then I have something from Barnes & Noble. I know what this one is. It wasn't supposed to actually be here today. So uh, we'll start with the Barnes & Noble one because I know what it is and I'm excited about it. This one is a complete freaking mystery. I got nothing on that one. So we'll save that one for last. Barnes & Noble, I placed a pre-order because I'm working now and I can do stuff like that. And I placed a pre-order for Vengeful in the Barnes & Noble exclusive signed copy. While I was there, I had something else in my cart and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to order it because I've been holding off and holding off. I told myself I didn't need it because it was a book that I have an arc of already and it's a physical arc and then I just decided to do it anyway. So I'm going to turn the camera around, we're going to find out what this is and then we're going to find out what this mystery bag is because who knows. And oh my gosh, look at how pretty it is. It is Legendary, which is the sequel to Caraval. And this is the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. And I believe the Exclusive Edition merely means that it has a an annotated chapter in the back of it. And it's the really exciting chapter that I'm in love with. Like, one of the best chapters of the book. And she really goes hard. Like, she really annotated it, like, a whole bunch. Um, so this is the famous chapter. Chapter 13. It's a good one, guys. This is a four-star read for me, and Carval was a three-star read for me. I liked Legendary so much more than Carval. It follows Tella, who is Scarlet's sister. So Tella was a secondary character in the first book. Tella is the main character of this one, and there is a second set of Carval games in the same year, which like never happens. And Tella is our main character. And again, the search is on to find out who Legend is. And this one has this really cool element of almost like these spooky tarot card feel to it. This one really impressed me. I really, really liked this one. When I read the arc, I kind of fell in love. And again, I had the arc copy, so I wasn't in a rush. I really did want to see that annotated chapter and I wanted a finished copy anyway. So now I have an arc and the finished, which is really nice for books when you love it. This is a really pretty cover. Um, so I'm really, really happy to have this. And then obviously, Vengeful, I need to wait for. Hold on one second. All right, I ripped it open, but I did not look at it. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James, which I really, 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 really wanted for... Um, this was on my wish list. Who is this from? The order slip in this said that says that this is from Shelly. So Shelly, thank you so much. Shelly also sent me uh, something else though. Shelly also sent me... So Shelly, you really did not have to send me more stuff. I really can't wait to read this, guys. It looks so, so pretty and I love that this is a paperback. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to keep the little slip that came with this because I keep all the little slips when people send me stuff. So thank you so much. 
That is very generous of you. And uh, this one, I'm excited. This one I already know and love. This one I've heard nothing but good things about and I'm very excited about. That is today's book haul. I have a little bit of time. I think I can finish Alex approximately before I go to work. If I can, that will be the end of the vlog. So let's go keep reading. I have finished Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett, who is one of my very favorite contemporary authors. I really, really love her books. This is probably my least favorite of her books. It has great family dynamic, great friend dynamic. I like everything that she does in terms of character building and character arc. It's just the fact that this holds one of my least liked plot devices, which is the whole people exist on the internet and then they meet in real life but don't realize that they're the same person that was on the internet talking. And then they're feeling conflicted because they felt a certain way about the person they were talking to on the internet. Now they're meeting somebody new and they're starting to care for that person and is that cheating and never putting two to two together. And just that kind of like gross miscommunication, I just can't, cannot get behind. Four stars because otherwise it was really, really good, but that just made it couldn't do it, couldn't handle it. So that was like the only star off, which is not horrible. So that's still really good. This was a known author, definitely a ton of orange on the cover. So that could have counted for orange on the cover. Um, probably would have been a five star prediction, which it didn't end up being a five star book. So this one is about Bailey. Bailey moves to live with her father in California from DC. And um, it's about Porter, who is a local boy surfer. His mother is of Hawaiian descent, I think. I could be really wrong. His whole family surfs. His sister does it like competitively all on the circuits. He used to, doesn't anymore. And they form a relationship. It's kind of like a hate to love thing. They really get on each other's nerve. They banter all the time but they're really, really, really cute. Um, and then there's just this miscommunication because somehow they had already met online in like a forum for old movies, like classic movie lovers. There's obviously side plots and family stuff going on and past traumas and getting over that and miscommunications. And I recommend all Jen Bennett, but I do have to say I liked The Anatomical Shape of a Heart and I liked Starry Eyes better than this one. It's still not horrible. It's still really cute. That is that. That is my eighth book finished. I still haven't read anything for Dear Heartbreak. I have a couple hours before I have to go to work, but what I think I'm going to do is actually just upload all this footage and have this scheduled and ready to go up at nine o'clock when I get done work. So I don't think I'm going to finish anything else today. My eyes are shot. My head is really hurting. Come home and get to work on my paper edits of my book, which I'm really, really excited about. So that's going to do it for day five of contemporary -thon. I finished a book, which was really exciting because I wasn't really planning on finishing a book. So book number eight is done. Tomorrow I anticipate finishing Dear Heartbreak and starting Letters to the Lost. We'll see what actually happens tomorrow. Who knows? So that's been it for contemporary -thon, day five. If you like this vlog, do go be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in tomorrow's vlog. Tomorrow is also our live drunk show on Chelsea's channel. Chelsea and Natasha are always linked down below. It will be at nine o'clock EST, 6 p.m. PST. Chelsea's channel, we're gonna have some drinks. We're gonna talk about how everybody's reading week has gone, give you a break from reading so you can just chat with the community. So definitely, definitely join us. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And yeah, now it's really it for this vlog and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.